Okay, well, welcome. We're, um, we're actually going to be doing a kind of an intro to section 3.7, the implicit differentiation process. Before we even get into that in the next video, I wanted to just clarify a couple concepts, some new notation that you're going to be seeing so that you're not, um, not confused when you see one entire example worked out. So anyway, this is just kind of clarifying concepts and clarifying the notation. All right, so just to uh, review a couple things that we've already done over the past week or so. The derivative of x squared with respect to x, which down here where you see the word verb and noun, uh, d dx being a verb, and uh, the derivative of x squared with respect to x, that's your noun. Okay, so when you d dx something, you do something to a function. You're actually taking the derivative. Okay, so you're differentiating x squared with respect to x. That's the ddx part. Uh, the 2x is the noun. 2x is the derivative of x squared with respect to x. All right, so all right, that's so that's no big deal. You um, you hopefully are already feeling pretty comfortable finding derivatives using the power rule, especially. And then you you learned uh, this stuff right here, in which uh, you've got the derivative of f of x. So the Basically, the general notation for derivatives, the derivative of f of x is, is written as f prime of x. And then you learn the chain rule on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that the derivative of f of g of x, when this guy right here is not just x, then we have to actually multiply by the derivative of that function. Okay, so that's just as a re, uh, just reiterating the chain rule, all right? And then the next slide, we took the chain rule a step further. In other words, if we have f of g of h of x, then we have two inside functions, and so we have to use the chain rule twice. The derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the first inside function multiplied by the derivative of the third, or second inside function, third function in, in general. And we did a, an example in class similar to this one. The derivative of the cosine of 3x quantity squared, the outside function is your power function. The inside function is that cosine of 3x, so the derivative of the outside is 2 times, two times the inside to the first power, multiplied by the derivative of the cosine of 3x, multiplied by the derivative of 3x, sorry, the derivative of 3x. And you put all those together and you get this in this box, okay? And so that's all, <clears throat> that's all fine and dandy. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Now, to remind you, the derivative of some function of x with respect to x, look, this is, the, this is the, the new part. These two letters are equal, okay? When they are equal, there's no need to use the chain rule, okay? You get 2x, okay? Let's try another one. The derivative of 4x cubed with respect to x, these are equal. Okay, they're the same letter. That's what this is going to, hopefully going to start making sense to you why we always say d dx, all right? Well, these are equal. And those are equal. You just use the power rule. 3 times 4 is 12, x to the 3 minus 1, which is x squared. Okay? All right, so I'm setting you up for success here. And this last one is the derivative of, let's say, 4y cubed with respect to x. Now notice, these letters are not equal, okay? They are not equal. Since they're not equal, you have to use the chain rule. 3 times 4 is 12 still, y to the 3 minus 1 is 2, but since they're not equal, we don't know what y is, we just know it's not x. And as long as it's not x, we have to multiply by the derivative of it. And that's it. Okay, I'd like you to try a couple. All right, let's try, uh, let's try this one. The derivative of y cubed with respect to x. Okay, try that one. Pause the video. Okay, and again, not equal. Since those, I don't do this every time, just the first part of it is 3y squared, so the derivative of the outside, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of y with respect to x. That's it. Okay. Let's try another one. Mm, not a whole lot of room here. So let's try this one. The derivative of 
the cosine of y with respect to x. Okay, pause the video here, try to get that. And that would be, um, well, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. But we don't know what that y is. We don't know what that thing is. We just know it's not x. It's not x. If it's not x, then we have to multiply by the derivative of that. Okay? And just to remind you, we've done this already. The derivative of, I'll try this again here, the derivative of um, the cosine of 3x. Okay, we've done this. That guy right there is not just x. Not just x. It's a 3x, but it's not just x. So we have to uh, we have to use the chain rule, and when we use the chain rule, we say, oh, all right, the outside function is cosine. The derivative of the cosine is negative sine, okay, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, okay, the derivative of 3x. Okay, well, it just so happens that this is a derivative we can find, so we do take it a step further, okay, and so we would write it negative sine 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3, okay, and to reiterate, that up here, we don't know what y is, and so we just have to leave it. That's it. That's how that we have to leave it like that. Okay? And that's, that's basically it. Let me give you a couple more problems for you to practice on, and then we'll be done with this particular video. Okay? Uh, let's try um, secant. So if y equals the secant of y... Uh, it just so happens that that could be the case, okay, secant of y. And then that means that dy dx is equal to, we use, the, we use the formula for the secant, and by now you should know the formula for the secant is secant tangent. So we have secant y tangent y. But then again, we have to multiply by dy dx. Okay, and... <laughs> Well, this is kind of a lame example. I made it up, but um, that's the way it goes. That's that's the answer. Okay, and we'll do more uh, more real kind of examples. Let's try one more. Uh, let's try um, looking for one. Hold on. Okay, here's a good one that keeps coming up. All right, so we want to take the derivative of. Let's do that in white. The derivative of x y with respect to x. Okay. Now we know the formula for the for the derivative of a of a power. Sorry, the derivative of a product. So the derivative of a product is the first times the derivative of the second, okay, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so that's the formula, and so let's use that same concept here. We've got um, the derivative of a product, which is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, it just so happens that we don't know... Let me erase this down here. Let me find a bigger eraser. Okay. Pardon me. All right, so we don't know what dy dx is. Well, that's dy dx. Okay, we don't know what it is. But we do know what dx dx is, and dx dx is equal to 1. And so we just have that. And we just have y times 1. So we have x times dy dx plus y times 1. And that's it. That's our derivative. That's dy dx. Or sorry, that's dxy dx, or the derivative of xy. So the next video will explain the implicit differentiation process, but Hopefully you're getting a, a better idea of how to find the derivative of y versus the derivative of x. And just remember uh, that when the, when, when the two letters are the same, then there's no need for the, the chain rule. Okay, But when the two letters are different, then you have to use the chain rule. Okay.